How good it is, my beloved brothers and sisters, to meet together once again. This conference marks 180 years since the Church was organized. How grateful we are for the Prophet Joseph Smith, who sought for the truth, who found it, and who, under the direction of the Lord, restored the gospel and organized the Church. The Church has grown steadily since that day in 1830. It continues to change the lives of more and more people every year and to spread across the earth as our missionary force seeks out those who are searching for the truth. Once again, we call upon the members of the Church to reach out to the new converts or to those making their way back into the Church to surround them with love and to help them feel at home. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for your faith and devotion to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all that you do in your wards and branches, in your stakes and districts. You serve willingly and well and accomplish great good. May the Lord bless you as you strive to follow Him and to obey His commandments. Since last we met, the Church has continued to provide much-needed humanitarian assistance in various locations around the world. In the past three months alone, humanitarian assistance has been provided in French Polynesia, Mongolia, Bolivia, Peru, Arizona, Mexico, Portugal, and Uganda among other areas in addition to those. Most recently, we've assisted in Haiti and Chile following devastating earthquakes and tsunamis in those areas. We express our love to our Church members who have suffered in these disasters. You are in our prayers. We express profound gratitude to all of you for your willingness to assist with our humanitarian efforts by sharing your resources and, in many cases, your time, your talents, and your expertise. This year marks 25 years since our humanitarian program became part of our welfare effort. The number of individuals assisted by this program could never adequately be measured. We will always strive to be among the first on the scene of disasters, wherever they may occur. The Church continues to grow and to move forward. The building of temples is an indication of such growth. Recently, we announced a new temple which will be built in Payson, Utah. We also announced major renovations which will be made to the Ogden, Utah Temple. Within the next three months, we will dedicate new temples in Vancouver, British Columbia, in the Gila Valley, Arizona, and in Cebu City in the Philippines. Later in the year, other temples will be dedicated or rededicated. We will continue to build temples throughout the world as our membership grows. Each year, millions of ordinances are performed in the temples for our deceased loved ones. May we be continuously faithful in performing such ordinances for those who are unable to do so for themselves. Many of you are aware that a short time after October conference, my dear wife Frances suffered a fall, which left her with a broken hip and a broken shoulder. After two successful surgeries and several weeks of hospitalization, she was able to return home. She's doing well and continues to make progress toward a full recovery. She was able to attend the Young Women General Meeting last Saturday and plans to attend a session or two this weekend. In fact, at the last minute, she said, I'm going today. And she's here. <laughs> and she's seated with our lovely daughter and will enjoy the session. You can't keep one of these Swedish girls down, I'll tell you. <laughs> Especially if her name was Johnson and yours is Monson. <laughs> and especially since my grandfather was one of the missionaries in the home of her father and who, with his companion, 
brought the entire family into the church. When I first called on Francis uh, and he heard my name, her father went to the bedroom and opened a drawer to a dresser and brought out some pictures. And he said, Are you related to this Monson? I said, Oh, yes. Uh, that's uh, Elias Monson. He's my grandfather's brother. And then her father wept. And he said, He was one of the missionaries who brought the gospel to my mother and father and my brothers and sisters and me. Where would we be without him and his companion? And then he gave me a kiss on the cheek. First date. <laughs> and then her mother, who's also totally Swedish, gave me a kiss on the other cheek. <laughs> and then my dear Francis said, I'll get my coat and we'll go. <laughs> Francis will tell me about that when I leave here today. <laughs> Why did you bring that up, she'll say. She's a great girl. I know she's saying, please don't say more, but <laughs> when we, uh, we, we, we were freshmen at the University of Utah, and I think we had an equal love for each other. And then there came World War II, and we all knew we had to go. And guess what she said to me? You're tall and skinny, and I think you'd look better in a Navy uniform. So I joined the Navy. <laughs> well, that's just something that's ad-libbed. But she joins me in expressing our deep gratitude to our Heavenly Father and to all of you for your prayers and your well wishes in her behalf. Now, brothers and sisters, we come here to be instructed and inspired. We welcome those of you who are new in the Church. Others of you are struggling with problems, with challenges, with disappointments, with losses. We love you, and we pray for you. Many messages covering a variety of gospel topics will be given during the next two days. Those men and women who will speak to you have sought Heaven's help concerning the messages they will give. It is my prayer that we may be filled with His Spirit as we listen and learn. That this may be so, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen.